depends uh, from what you think uh, is a luxury. Uh, design for me, <coughs> for all the Italian design uh, factories uh, phenomenon, is a new and very contemporary form of art and poetry. Then, is art and poetry a luxury? I leave to you the question. Uh, it depends very much from the area where you are working in. For example, in my personal job, in my work, I am dealing with uh, objects that are hundreds of years old, if not millenaries old. If you think how old is a bowl, or a cup, or a pot, thousand years old, that means that almost all the functional uh, uh, matters have been uh, have found their solution and uh, the space which is left is uh, still a space related to the emotions not so much to the function you cannot invent so much in my field there are two um, uh, two schools of thinking in that area one school says that uh, okay in design history, there were periods of very, very tough economic or social <coughs> situation. Uh, like if you take Finland, Northern Europe, in the 30s, when Finland started to be in an independent country. And it was the same period when it gave birth to the best of its uh, design, the period of Alvar Aalto, just to quote one name, to mention one name. Or in, if you think to Italy, right after the war, when Italy was all destroyed, and the phenomenon during the early 50s, this phenomenon of the Italian design factories started uh, operating. But on the other hand, there is the other school that says the more we can afford to experiment, also looking to the market, the more, uh, the wider uh, and the uh, healthier is the market, the better it is for experiments, ex experimental activities. We put more attention to the prices. That is evident, self-evident. But this is the only modification. For the rest, since I do not believe design is a luxury, but design is a new form of art and poetry, so people need art and poetry as well. They will need the design, so I am trying to continue to develop the best possible design. I will, by sure, not decrease the effort to produce uh, the best possible design, that is sure. So I don't see a contradiction between having a design uh, with a lot of integrity and so also being accepted by the market. Um, um, an American designer, Raymond Levy, in the 30s was, uh, was uh, saying, t uh, was, uh, was practicing the uh, a strategy invented by him that was called the Maya strategy, meaning most uh, advanced yet acceptable by, by the people. This is the factor uh, what makes a good design, to be together, able to, bring, to be able to bring together the best possible quality in terms of expression, in artistic terms, and that is a cultural matter, and also to be understood by final customers, and that is a commercial matter. The strange of design is that we try to put these two apparently opposite um, facts of matters together. Being a research lab, I am allowed to take, by definition, to take more risks in my activity and to work more close to the borderline, the borderline which divides the, the area of possible from the area of not possible. Okay, the difference with a mass production company is that the mass production company, they try to work as far as possible from the borderline. Uh, instead, being an Italian design company, my role and my destiny is to work as close as possible to the borderline. By definition, I am asked to take more risks in my industrial activity. What is more exciting also. 
going back to this example of Richard Sapper uh, water cattle, this was a good example because uh, Richard wanted to have a polysensorial, multisensorial object. I mean an object not appealing only to the see, seeing or touching, but also to other senses, for example, hearing. He wanted to produce a melody. Not only that, he wanted a melody remembering when he was a child living in Germany in a village with a river and on the river was passing by a, a, a steamboat. He wanted his cattle producing the same melody. After like one and a half year, my technicians were not able to find a way, so I was obliged to put the project on the side and to abandon it. Until then, two years later, uh, one of Sapper sisters living in Germany found out in the Black Forest a small craftsman producing a chorist. Chorists are these pipes that you put inside and that are producing the melody. So after some negotiation we had a special production of two different versions of pipes with the me and with the C, which uh, allowed me to start again with the project which then was uh, presented in 82 and uh, became one of the most important Alessi, Alessi products. Going back to this example of Richard Sapper uh, water cattle, this was a good example because uh, Richard wanted to have a polysensorial, multisensorial object. I mean an object not appealing only to the see, seeing or touching, but also to other senses, for example, hearing. He wanted to produce a melody. Not only that, he wanted a melody remembering when he was a child living in Germany in a village with a river and on the river was passing by a, a, a steamboat. He wanted his cattle producing the same melody. After like one and a half year, my technicians were not able to find a way, so I was obliged to put the project on the side and to abandon it. Until then, two years later, uh, one of Sapper sisters living in Germany found out in the Black Forest a small craftsman producing a chorist. Chorists are these pipes that you put inside and that are producing the melody. So after some negotiation we had a special production of two different versions of pipes with the me and with the C, which uh, allowed me to start again with the project which then was uh, presented in 82 and uh, became one of the most important Alessi, Alessi products. I think that our identity of uh, as an Italian design uh, factory or a research laboratory into the field of design stays precisely in that we are able to express different <coughs> localities or different local cultures represented by our designers because if we work with Philip Stark he is representing and people is looking into within his projects to f look expecting to find an expression of French culture. If we are working with Michael Graves People, the quality of his work stays in the fact that his work is coming out from American cultures. Or if with Japanese or Brazilian or, 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 or British. And the characteristic of preserving this locality, these local cultures, is a big strength that uh, is uh, one of the skills of the Italian design factories. Not global at all. In a way we become interesting on a global scenario, right, because we represent a very specific local cultures which are represented by our designers. As far as I can see, this is a phenomenon of the Italian design factories, which is, uh, which is today the kind of, kind of uh, hair of older phenomena like the Deutsche Werkbund, the Bauhaus, uh, the Wiener Werkstätte, the Assen Craft in England and so on, is continuing to, 
to to act well in terms of uh, where the creative energies can come from i agree that today in this moment italy has a little uh, freshness like we had many years ago and there are countries which are apparently in this moment more, more interesting for example U uh, uk japan even probably us at least into the world of architecture if not of design and so we are very much looking to these uh, areas. Mm -hmm.